Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today we've got a, another Sega to uh, home conversion. I should say Sega Arcade to home console conversion. Uh, it's Galaxy Force 2. And uh, fortunately this port is better than the previous two uh, arcade conversions I did uh, on the Marty, including Turbo Outrun and Afterburner 2. Uh, unfortunately with Galaxy Force 2, uh, some massive compromises were made. I mean, compromises were made in the other ports to the system, but uh, in this, the screen size is just extremely small. Uh, I'm going to have the gameplay footage here cropped out, or the borders uh, that are normally on a TV cropped out, so you're not going to see exactly what I'm seeing. But uh, let me just say that the actual gameplay footage in this game only takes up about half your screen, <laughs> which is slightly disappointing. Uh, but despite that, the game actually plays pretty well compared to Turbo Outrun and Afterburner 2, which I uploaded just previously. And uh, it's still fun. It's got some uh, decent graphics. Unfortunately, there is slowdown. There's a lot of pop-up and so forth. But I guess the whole point is that everything is just uh, a hell of a lot more playable uh, than it was in the, uh, the other conversions that I mentioned. And we're getting some graphical hiccups. That is really weird. I don't think it's supposed to be doing that. Let's see, uh... Go ahead and hit start, see if everything else loads up. This is really odd. Well, so far that's good. Okay. Roger. So, you basically got your options here. Uh, you've got varying difficulty levels and so Roger. forth. Roger. Uh, you just press your uh, A button to scroll through them. Uh, multiple Roger. input pads as usual. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have any of those extra accessories. You can adjust your uh, sound effects and music volume. And what's interesting is you've got competition mode. Competition is basically like a permanent loop of, from what I can tell, the first level. Not the first level. Any level you want, you pick a level and it just loops that level over and over and over again. Um, so basically if you're having like a local game event and you wanted to do like a, have a score competition on, on one of the levels in this game, you set competition to on and then you'll just leave the game running and players can step up and just play through a single level and try to get their scores, uh, try to get the highest scores possible and then it'll just redo the whole level. They can just, you know, you can have a whole line of people at a, at a local gaming event or something uh, to do that. It's kind of cool. It's basically like a score attack uh, for a competition setting, which is not something you see in or saw in classic video games from this era that often, or really in video games that often, period. I think it's a pretty cool addition. Um, and let's go ahead and get out of that and jump right into the game. And I uh, hope that it's not totally glitched out because that was really weird on that intro. All right, so far so good. Uh, so it looks like you can actually play uh, any level in just about any order you want from what it seems like. But we're going to go ahead and start on uh, scene A, level one. Now, I should uh, make a disclaimer as always. I don't make any guarantees as to actually being able to finish this game. I am not that familiar with Galaxy Force 2. I have played it several times on the Marty, but I'm not that great at it, much like Afterburner 2. Um, in some of the uh, mid-80s Sega arcade games. Um, but uh, we'll try. So we'll see what uh, what we can do with this. Uh, last time I played this, I think I ended up getting to stage... I thought I got through all the five stages here, and then there was a sixth one, and I think that's where I died. Uh, I don't recall exactly, but I guess uh, we'll see what we can do here. So yeah, Galaxy Force 2 is a uh, port of an arcade game by the same name. It's uh, heavily downgraded here for the Marty, but like I said, it's still pretty fun, actually. So, uh, you can press A to fire. You've got these uh, odd, sort of like tiny twin laser shots. Um, and then you'll notice uh, some locking on happening. You'll notice these cursors appearing on the screen, indicating that you're locked on to enemies. Uh, that's basically it. There's not really much else to the gameplay. When you see yourself locked on, you just press B, and uh, you pretty much fire out these homing lasers. So you don't have to actually really press anything to lock on the enemies. The locking on just kind of happens as you, uh, you know, get in the view of um, the enemies on the screen. Now, one big mechanic in this game is your energy meter, and uh, it's constantly ticking down. And once that hits zero, it's pretty much game over. Every time you run into an object, 
uh, you lose energy. Uh, killing enemies raises your energy bonus meter on the, um, the bottom right hand portion of the screen. Um, at certain checkpoints or after uh, beating levels, um, that energy bonus will be applied to your energy, uh, your overall energy. Uh, so the idea is to kill as much stuff as you can to build a really large energy bonus and uh, not take damage and uh, Keep your energy nice and high because if your energy is high then you're pretty much gonna survive and you're gonna get through the game uh, If your energy is low, you're probably gonna die and uh, it's game over. I don't Think there are any continues in this game. I could be wrong, but I guess we're gonna find out today because I'm Definitely going to be continuing if it's there or starting over depending on how long um, this first attempt takes so uh, Galaxy Force 2 has a tendency of alternating between uh, Outside levels and inside levels or not levels per se, but sections so you'll start off on a like, you know, like the surface of a planet or um, Flying through space or something or flying through clouds even on on one level and then uh, you'll go through a section like this where you're sort of flying through a cave, touching the ceilings and floors and, and walls will damage you or deplete energy. Uh, holding on the uh, run or select button actually will slow you down, which is probably useful for these parts right here. This is a core, and on this first level, that's pretty much the end of the stage. That's They kind of act as your bosses, basically. They're not really bosses, but... Um, the end level sequences, I guess you could say. And, uh... So, you need to make sure that you, you're locked onto those cores, you just press B to, to fire some lasers at it, it blows up, and then... onto the next stage, basically. Um... So, we're on level 2. This level actually has some pretty cool visuals. Unfortunately, uh, you know, we are playing the Marty version, so it doesn't really do Galaxy Force 2 justice. If you play the arcade version or play the Sega Saturn home port, uh, there's also a modern release of this on the uh, Nintendo 3DS. It's a uh, actual 3D game uh, done by M2, I believe, and it runs at 60 frames a second. It's absolutely beautiful on the 3DS. Uh, pretty much arcade perfect as far as I can tell. And... Um, if you guys haven't actually seen the original Galaxy Force 2, I do recommend uh, firing up a YouTube video of, say, the Saturn version or the arcade version, you know, a long play of the arcade one, and uh, to really see how awesome uh, the graphics are in that game. It's, it was using the superscalar technology that you saw in, like, Space Harrier and Afterburner and Outrun and things like that, but um, it was a later game in that style of arcade game by Sega, and so the graphics are a lot more polished than what you had in, say, the original Space Harrier or OutRun. Um, and levels like this especially were just really awesome to look at. Uh, so I definitely recommend checking out a video of uh, a different version of this game in action. Uh, an arcade perfect one in action. So one of the big drawbacks to this version is, you know, I've already mentioned it, but is the, uh, the small draw distance, unfortunately. It's, uh, there's a lot of pop-up in this game, but if you get used to it, you can just, you know, you get used to it, and you don't... It's not that you stop noticing it, but you stop really caring about it, I guess, I guess you could say. Uh, at least that's how it is for me, so... Fortunately, uh, despite some slowdown, the frame rate overall is fairly smooth, actually. It's a good bit smoother than Afterburner uh, or Turbo Outrun, which I've already mentioned a couple times now. And of the Sega arcade ports that I've played on the Marty, I don't know if there are any others. Um, uh, but as far as Turbo Outrun, Afterburner, and uh, Galaxy Force 2, Galaxy Force 2 is by far the most enjoyable and most playable, in my opinion. And uh, so if you get an FM Towns Marty, if you, if you have a way of playing the Marty, uh, Galaxy Force 2 is probably the one Sega conversion Super scalar conversion I can think of that's actually worth playing Maybe not necessarily worth buying <laughs> As the case is with most FM Towns software uh, FM Towns software is absurdly expensive So if you're gonna actually be buying this software 
Um, you need to have very deep pockets, basically. Uh, the average game on the system is a couple of hundred dollars if you're looking for uh, complete copies, boxes and manuals and everything. The software is very obscure, unfortunately. Uh, not all of it will run on the Marty, but the stuff that does run on the Marty is usually pretty expensive. And, um, and for the quality that you're getting, as far as the software being playable on the Marty, it's not really worth the money. Uh, unless you're just an absolute hardcore collector that has to have uh, the physical copies and has the money to spend. Um, fortunately, the Marty does take backups. It doesn't uh, have copy protection on it. Um, so you can play these really expensive games with, uh, with little effort these days, fortunately. But yeah, of those three Sega ports that I was talking about, Galaxy Force 2 is probably the only one I can think of that's actually worth playing. I, I think it's a fun game. I think the Marty version is fun. You're probably best off playing, say, the arcade version emulated or getting the 3DS version uh, or the Sega Saturn import. Uh, there's also a really nice one on PlayStation 2 in Japan, which I always keep forgetting about, and I need to pick that up sometime because that's still relatively inexpensive compared to uh, FM Town's games. <laughs> But, um, really fun game, actually, on the Marty. I, if you do get a Marty or have a Marty, I definitely recommend checking it out. Despite its gimpy nature in some cases. So we're actually doing okay so far. We're making decent progress. We're on mission three. I haven't really run into, uh, much, you know, many problems yet. Uh, one thing when you're playing this game, it's, it's kind of good to just... Try to steer clear of the enemies. Just keep moving. Use your uh, lock-on mechanic to, to take, a, take out your foes, and then just keep moving in the uh, opposite direction. Uh, the levels have a tendency of just, like, looping. So, yeah, I can literally just keep holding right, and uh, I'll sort of just... Uh, kind of like this. Just literally hold right, and... Uh, the, the levels seem to kind of, like circle around like if there's an enemy on the screen and I loop around quick enough it'll pop back up on the other side um, at least that's what it seems like it seems like the kind of design that it is a lot of the enemies are scrolling by so quickly that it's it's not showing that but uh, I don't even know if I'm making any sense right now oh because I am actually pretty tired when I'm doing this let's play it's one of those let's plays where I'm just like ugh, dead tired it's very late at night as I'm recording this, whereas a lot of the other Marty Let's Plays I've been doing have been in uh, early morning after getting off work. Sort of getting in that last boost of energy. But uh, there are going to be some uh, cave sections here later on where we're going to have to hold down the, uh, the run button to slow ourselves down. Otherwise, it just feels like we get sucked into the walls. And if, obviously, that's bad in this game because you lose your energy. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, it just seems to be a good idea to sort of just stay away from your enemies, if at all possible. Let the the homing shots just take care of them. And, uh... That should do it. You know, one of these days, I think I'm gonna have to try to tackle the Sega Genesis version of the game. I did actually own that for a little while. And I recall it being severely compromised compared to even, like, this version of the game. It just... Kind of like Super Thunder Blade, it felt quite different from, like, the original game it was based on. Like, you could tell it was supposed to be... It was trying to be Galaxy Force 2, but just the way it felt, um, and so forth, just didn't really... Uh, didn't really jive with me, you know? It didn't really click. Um, but I'll have to revisit that one sometime, since that's the one a lot of people in North America are probably the most familiar with. So we've got a lot of energy. 1500 is actually really solid. And, uh, we're building our energy bonus. It's like the, uh, the scaling in this game isn't that bad by, uh, Marty standards. Typically, uh, uh, Marty games often, 
as far as the Super Scalar games go, don't really do uh, the style justice, but uh, Galaxy Force 2 actually seems to do an okay job at it uh, with how the the uh, the sprites are uh, layered on top of each other. It gives the uh, the illusion of three-dimensional depth, which is what the Super Scalar style is supposed to do. So if you look at like the ceilings and floors, it looks like a legitimate, like, sort of, like, three-dimensional plane, if you will. Granted, the edges on the left and left and right sides of the screen are, you know, obviously much more jagged. You can kind of see what they're doing with the sprites, you know, layering them in a certain way to give that illusion of 3D. Um, the arcade version obviously did that a hell of a lot better, but on the Marty, it's still doing it, uh, it's still doing it solid, uh, compared to Turbo Outrun and Afterburner 2. Uh, and actually, Afterburner 2 did it okay, it's just the problem with that game is that it ran at like 5 frames a second. Like, no joke. But, uh, Galaxy Force 2, uh, oftentimes it runs fairly smooth. It runs at, at least 10 or 15 frames a second, which... ...obviously isn't much by today's standards, but compared to the other Superscalar ports to the, um, the FM Towns... Uh, on the Marty, it, this is just much smoother compared to those other ones. So, alright, we're on mission four. Still making decent progress, it seems. Just slammed into an enemy, and uh, the game's slowing down pretty bad now. So there are these enemies that are causing these spread patterns, and I try to just fly through them and just try to avoid them, basically. Which uh, is easier said than done sometimes. I honestly feel like my main shot, though, the, uh, the little twin lasers, it feels like they're not that useful, to be honest with you. Unfortunately, I'm taking damage, which is bad. So we might be cutting this level pretty close. We'll see what happens. It seems like using your brakes on those sharp turns helps, too. Uh, as you progress throughout the game, it gets harder and harder to make those turns. You know, occasionally you're, you'll hear this guy say, Left turn! Right turn! And uh, the turns will get sharper as, as the game goes on. In the early levels, it's just you just hold left or right and that's it. Uh, but later on in the game, it seems like you want to sort of like hold your brakes a little bit. You'll notice you'll come to a stop and then you sort of get off the wall. See, it's actually it's still not working that well. I'm gonna keep trying it, though. Alright, so now that's kind of cheap. Guys coming from behind and just slamming right into me. Yeah, it's still a little weird. I still haven't quite figured it out yet. If anybody has actually played this version of uh, Galaxy Force 2 and has any experience with it and uh, wants to give me some tips. Uh, I'm I am all ears. Uh, please post a comment below and uh, let me know if I'm doing something wrong. Well, that was odd. It said like shoot the core, but the core was off the screen. It was being covered by uh, some walls. That was interesting. Well, we're back up to healthy energy levels, which is good. And we're on mission five. This is the last planet that was selectable at the very beginning. 
Now, I'm not entirely sure how many levels are in this game. It might be six, it might be seven, hell, it might be more, but uh, five are uh, the fit uh, up to mission five is uh, as high as you can select at the beginning of the game. Um, and now I've never tried selecting anything past mission five. I don't know if um, I don't know if you actually start off at mission five. Uh, kind of like some early 80s arcade games used to do, you know, they let you start at a later level. Um, sort of as like a version of a checkpoint, basically. Um, starting the game later on in the game, basically. Um, or I don't know if it, if, if, if you say, uh, I don't know if you play, say, Mission 5, and then it takes you back to Mission 1 after you complete Mission 5, and then you go Mission 1 through 4, or something like that. I'm not sure how it works exactly, I haven't tried it. Oh, man, I can't even talk right now. <sighs> I should probably just redo this Let's Play, but I'm gonna go ahead and just stick it out, and tough it out. I actually tried doing a, uh, another video tonight, and uh, I just, my mind wasn't there, and I was just like, stuttering all over the place and doing this and that. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and try to edit it anyway. And I was trying to edit it, and I was like, this sounds like garbage. I just deleted the whole thing. <laughs> it's like a couple hours of my life wasted. Um, that's the thing about doing these YouTube videos is, you know, all, the off-the-cuff videos uh, in particular, it's not... The scripted videos are typically fine, because that's the purpose of writing a script, is you get something that sounds good, and it's not something that you're gonna have to re-record, you know? Um, but with these off-the-cuff videos, you run the risk of just, like, slurring your speech, stuttering, not making sense. Um, and you run the risk of just having total garbage content, which it's, it's better to just delete and just do over or just not do it at all. And I'm at that point with this Let's Play where I should just be like, yeah, I should just not even do this. I should just come back and play this game later when I'm actually awake. But it's okay, we will persevere. I will hope to make more sense throughout the rest of this video. Ugh. Yeah, lots of slowdown in this level. I still haven't gotten much as far as energy bonus though, which is not good. Come to think of it, there haven't really been all that en many enemies I've actually killed. Or maybe the game just gets harder as you uh, progress, like it starts giving you less uh, energy as a bonus uh, for kills. I don't know. Or maybe as I was locking onto a lot of these guys, they were just flying off the screen and my lasers weren't destroying them as a result. That could be it too. Alright, we're gonna fly back inside. Yeah, that's what I figured. So one thing I just noticed is this is one of those uh, games where your score is just constantly rising as you play. So you don't even need to kill anything to boost your score, but killing things I think increases your score faster. Very much like Space Harrier and Afterburner, uh, Outrun, they all do kind of the same thing. Uh, as the screen scrolls by you, you're getting points, which is, which is interesting. It's getting tight. Well, it was tight. This game does have some interesting music. Like I'm not I can't say I'm a huge fan of this track that's playing in the background. Sounds like some dudes just trying to shred. Um but there are quite a few tunes in this game I do like. I think it does have a pretty interesting soundtrack. But I'm not sure how it compares to the arcade game. It probably was remixed, much like uh, the stuff in Turbo Outrun and Afterburner were remixed. Uh, in Turbo Outrun, there was some dance-themed stuff, whereas in the arcade, it was more like driving rock-style. Um, 
Afterburner 2 actually went for the, you know, when they covered the music, they went for an actual hard rock style mix. Okay, so this is actually where I got to last time I played the game. So this is a little tricky. It's a very tight tube you're in. And it's very easy to just smack into the sides of the wall. And then there are turns that are so tough, you just kind of get sucked down to like the bottom, kind of like I am right now. It's a neat graphical effect though, I gotta say. Clever idea for a level, I guess. Almost reminds me of uh, one of the bonus stages in Tempest 2000 for the Jaguar. Uh, and I guess the Saturn as well, technically. But let's hope for the best here. This is actually as far as I got last time I played. Uh, I played this. I played it on stream last week, actually, after I did my first group of Let's Plays. I figured I would do a little bit of uh, FM Towns Marty on Twitch, get some practice in on these other games. That way my Let's Plays aren't totally incompetent. Maybe only partially. And uh, we're at the 26 minute mark, too, of the video. So what's probably going to happen is... Uh, once we get a game over here, we're going to go ahead and just cut it off. That was weird. I was trying to go down, but the ship didn't really seem like it was doing that. Maybe I should have braked. Man, massive slowdown. Which is weird, because it's not really much happening on screen. It's literally just these... Um, Tube-like sprites, and that's it. There's no other background. There's no... Which is odd. I think what might have happened last time I played this is I ran out of energy. Penetrate the enemy fortress. Could really use some energy. But yeah, I don't think I even made it to this part last time though. But yeah, I'm running deathly low on energy. That's, that is not good at all. Oh, jeez. I don't even see that uh, wall coming up. Well, that sucks. That sucks pretty bad, actually. That was really disappointing, actually. I was, I was hoping I'd get past that level this time. Uh, if anybody has played Galaxy Force 2, let me know if that's, say, the final stage, or if it's, uh... If there's more after that. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is going to be a relatively short Let's Play this time, guys, compared to the usual stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just wrap it up here. I could play again, but that's going to put the, the Let's Play at uh, about an hour after everything is all said and done. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just cut it off here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'll be back with some more Marty Let's Play sometime soon, so definitely uh, stay tuned for that. I'm going to have Viewpoint coming up, uh, Truxton 2. Uh, Splatterhouse, most likely. I'm gonna actually try to practice Splatterhouse, so maybe I can actually beat it uh, during the Let's Play. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I've also got a couple of other random games here, like Bubble Bobble, and um, games I'm not that super familiar with, but that might be fun to just, you know, try to play on the on a Let's Play so you guys can see how the versions are uh, compared to other versions. So, alright guys, we'll take it easy. Uh, I'll see you soon.